sea transport sector is regarded as the mainstay of transport all over the world. And dock workers are considered the backbone of this sector. The productivity level of workers in this sector is measured by the number of containers handled in an hour. As the productivity level increases, the transport sector in general booms. If the productivity level decreases, however, the entire transport sector deteriorates subsequently. As it is the case in any given work, if safety measures, health insurance and incentives are taken care of by the employers, workers' productivity level will increase in turn. Otherwise, workers' productivity level will diminish. The most annoying nightmare to any worker is the lack of job security, especially with the absence of an active trade union to look after the workers and stand up against employers to defend their rights and maintain their well-being. Job security is the main cause of anxiety to all workers. It is also the main reason behind their gathering to emphasize the importance of establishing trade unions that are capable of defending them against their employers. The General Trade Union of Workers and Seaports and Clearance in Aqaba was not an active one in the past because the Jordanian law forbids the formation of internal organizations within the public sector. Therefore, it remained passive and did not actually represent the workers, nor did it educate them about the importance of union organization. But after the privatization of the container terminal, with the favor of an international seaport investor, and especially when the workers felt endangered to lose their jobs due to the new employer's policy towards them, the workers gathered in the form of unorganized groups to defend their rights. As a result, the International Transport Workers Federation realized the threat that was haunting the workers, and that was the beginning of the revival of the General Trade Union of Workers and Seaports in Clearance in Aqaba. The General Trade Union of Workers and Seaports in Clearance in Aqaba was established in 2006, with only 35 members out of 900. And that was because of fear. The ITF helped the workers worldwide to get rid of their fear and started enlightening them about how crucial it is to increase the number of the affiliates in the union, which represents them and defends their rights. The ITF did not save an effort to reach out for the workers, so the officials met with them at their gathering spots, the workplace, and they even met with them in the cafes that they used to go to. The ITF and through excessive educational and orientation sessions, workshops, which were held in order to introduce the workers to union and syndicalistic work, managed to come out with an elite trade unionists who were elected in the first ever trade union elections in order to truly represent the workers, fellow workers who come from the same background to carry the burden of the fellow workers and strive to achieve their aspirations. The birth of the first local, independent, and democratic trade union, which is dedicated to represent the seaport workers in Aqaba, finally took place. The trade union, with the support of the workers and the resolution of its officials, and through the training and educational courses that were held, became a much more mature one. A trade union that is capable of creating a partnership between the workers and their employers. It also took part in every little detail. I personally believe, and without a doubt, 
that the General Trade Union of Workers in Seaport and Clearance in Aqaba is one of the leading unions in the region and considered one of the best in the world. A true partnership between the company and its workers is the ultimate goal which the ITF is keen to achieve through its regional office. I think ITF has played a very important role for us is in the development of the skills of uh, the local union representatives here in Aqaba, providing them uh, training and understanding of what it means to be collective, the roles and responsibilities of the union in uh, working with management, and uh, this is something we've benefited from at Aqaba Container Terminal. Throughout the workshops and training courses which were regularly held by the ITF's regional office, by which it exposed unionists to various syndicalistic experiences worldwide, those who were once small groups of unorganized workers became elite unionists who have the ability to bargain and negotiate terms with top management executives and made an unprecedented mutually beneficial agreement. What we see today is a much matured relationship, both on the sense of the union representatives understanding the benefits, the powers and the responsibility of being collective in the negotiations. By affiliating themselves with their unions and with the full support provided by the ITF, the ceiling of workers' demands got higher than merely keeping their jobs, as it included securing proper working conditions, uplifting public safety measures, health insurance, in addition to wage increase and incentives. The Dockers, we have a global network terminal strategy. This is where we engage with four big companies, ultimately control nearly 50% of all the ports globally. That's APM Terminals, DP World, Hutchinson and PSA of Singapore. Our strategy is to engage with these companies throughout the world, but also in a dialogue in the middle now, why is it important to this region? A number of significant investments, particularly from APM and um, Dubai ports, have placed brand new high cost facilities in this region. That's part of a global strategy to ensure. So in reality, in some cases, the Arab colleagues in the unions here have been helping lead the global strategy because they've been able to recruit new members, show the value of trade union membership and also take direct action to secure good conditions in a secure environment. Considering the importance of the Arab world and as a result of privatizing most of the seaports in the Arab countries, the ITF regional office was founded in 2004. The common factors between the Arab world countries, like language, geography and customs and traditions, had a great impact on accelerating the process of founding trade unions in the Arab countries region, especially after the big victory that the General Trade Union of Workers, Seaports and Clearance in Aqaba had against the investing company. The unionists held numerous courses and workshops for the workers in different parts of the Arab world, and by doing so, they managed to export their experience to their Arab counterparts. Six countries participated in the workshop that we attended, and we managed to reach a consensus to stress the importance of activating the role of the trade union in Egypt, in addition to improving the working conditions of the workers at ECCT in the eastern dock of Port Said. So we dedicated ourselves to achieving that, and we made it come true in only a couple of months. The ITF's active role in Egypt was unprecedented as it played a helping hand in establishing the trade union of sailors and it also contributed in supporting the transport unions which were lying under unusual pressure after the first Egyptian revolution. The ITF took part in training and educating unionists who are now capable of taking initiatives. The ITF is perceived as the protecting shield of the sea workers, whether on board the ships or in the seaports. 
The regional office of the ITF did not stop there. In the Arab Gulf, the ITF, armed with its co-actions and support to the workers at Khalifa Containers Terminal, managed to give them back their jobs after they were arbitrarily laid off. The ITF also introduced them to the cases that trade unions encountered in different parts of the world. In light of constant educating and under the patronage of the ITF specifically in the Arab world, the way we take care of business has become more methodical and the work flows smoothly and effectively. As we have a clearer look than we used to have in the past. Whereas employers are still stuck in the past with their old fashioned ways of running businesses, which are primarily based on exploiting and replacing. We in the ITF, on the other hand, embrace partnerships and we have a strong belief that if one partner loses, then we all lose, and vice versa. The intellectual level of the unionists and the workers is way beyond that of the employers now, because the latter couldn't keep up with the pace resulting from the new variables, and especially with the new developments in the transport sector. Everyone has a dream to pursue, but the dream of all of the transport workers in the Arab world is to become part of the ITF, and this is exactly what the ITF regional office is looking forward to accomplish in the area, and so do the workers at Salala Sipur. Yeah. In Tanja Seaport in Morocco, syndication activists were neglected and suppressed by arresting them in order to weaken the syndicalistic organization. But that all changed when the ITF stepped in through its regional office, gaining a victory not only for Tanja Seaport workers, but for the entire world alike. The Arab unions became closely engaged in the international unions community. A very good example is the sticking together, which was showcased by hundreds of thousands of unionists across the world who rallied to demand the immediate release of the Moroccan militant Saeed al Hayrash. Their genuine support resulted in releasing him, and that victory became a cornerstone for regional and universal interdependence. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the ITF. I honestly wouldn't be having this conversation. But this office has add, added many new affiliates to the ITF. And by adding new affiliates and having successes by organizing and showing the trade unionists that by sticking together and supporting each other, we add another union and then another member, and then we become stronger. And then the employers have to listen to our voices. And also the governments watch. We see the economies growing here. We see the political change, but without an office here, working nearly 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we wouldn't be able to provide this.